So in this video, let's learn about distributed file system. So before learning about distributed file system, we will need to understand about file systems first. So you guys would have heard about NTFS, XFAT and FAT and all of that, right? Maybe when you guys try to format the pen drive or disk, you will have the option to select what kind of you know, file system you need to select. Maybe we guys is, doesn't exactly know the difference between NTFS and XFAT and FAT. Some operating system supports some kind of you know file system and some doesn't. What is NTFS means? New technology file system which is basically was developed by Microsoft uh, for Windows NT and we still are using NTFS. Uh, what does this file system does? File system is a way in which files are named and where they are placed logically to help us to um, retrieve the files faster and also efficiently from the memory blocks from the hard disk um, or whatever storage you are using. Um, so basically simply uh, file system is the one who basically uh, handles all of your folders and files um, where whenever you store it in your disk drives basically it knows the sector where uh, that file is present from the storage and it basically retrieves or writes there at any time when you write and read um, and also a lot of file system does use a lot of compression techniques uh, to save these files into the disk to save a lot of uh, you know memory and all of that stuff happens and it also handles the you know uh, directory structures and the naming conventions and everything uh, you don't need to really uh, understand about the internal working of the file system but we need to um, uh, understand a little bit just just for the sake of it uh, so let's jump in why we need a distributed file system and how basically distributed file system works uh, there are a lot of distributed file system and i'm going to take one example and explain how that works uh, let's understand why we need it first okay so now let's take an example to understand why we need distributed file system say suppose I have a um, CPU with about 500 GB in it 500 GB hard disk in it so I can only save files up to 500 GB but think about it we might have files more than 500 GB right what if I have files of about 700 GB um, and then how do I save it to this server? It's not possible because I only have 500 GB. All I have to do is either upgrade 500 GB to maybe 1 TB, maybe buy a new hard disk of another 500 GB or replace the old 500 GB and get 1 TB hard disk and have um, that available in the server and I can now save up to 1 TB of files. What if I have, okay, 10 terabyte of file, what do I do? So I have to, I will have to buy 10 1 TB hard disk and attach it to this machine. But this machine may not be able to support. Then I need to buy an even powerful machine to support, you know, 10 1 TB hard disk. Or I will have to buy 10 TB 1 hard disk and that will be much more costlier than buying, you know, 10 1 TB hard disk. So it's all not feasible. So think okay I somehow upgraded the machine and I was able to upgrade this to 10 TB okay and then I'm saving all of that data or files in this machine okay now all good so happy scenario works what if for some reason those files are very critical or very uh, you know high of high importance and I don't uh, um, I'm not supposed to lose those files now if you see this is like a single point of failure what if this machine crashes or something it caught fire or the hard disk failed what happens to my data all gone right all of my data is gone now how do we make sure that we don't lose that data so I'll have to buy one more machine or yeah so transfer cop keep a copy of all the you know data which I had in the server to another 10 TB of files you know uh, another 10 TB of hard disk that way we are safe now even though if I lose one machine I have all of the files so I have all of that files saved in another machine so I'm safe now but I can't always keep on buying machines like okay tomorrow if I need another 10 TB I'll have to either upgrade this then I need to upgrade this as well or buy one more machine. It is like 
getting um, out of hand and it is like a totally unorganized way of doing it. What if I had very small files of just one KB and there are about millions of files like how do I transfer it here? What if I, I upgraded this to 20 dB and I need to either upgrade this also or I need to buy one more machine with another 10 TB um, and then copy here. Copy half here and copy half here. And uh, so this is totally unorganized because when I want to search that file, how do I know where those files are? Maybe this got crashed. Now I know that for sure some you know files are backed up in this machine and this machine, but I don't know really where that file is here and where that file is where. There are two machines. Maybe if I had more machine, I don't. It's very hard to find um, those machines. Otherwise, I'll have to connect all of this machine into one network, and I can access from one place. But that is also difficult because then I need to keep on logging into these machines, or you know, all of these uh, like like a network file old way of doing it. Right? That's that doesn't look good. Uh, but definitely when we are in the big data era where we have you know petabytes of data in that case doing this way is is not a really good idea so that's the reason why we need distributed file system because the conventional file system uh, which we had uh, like NTFS or XFAT or FAT were basically designed to handle only one machines you know data storage needs but not across the machines so distributed file systems are you know brand new uh, you know file systems where they are kind of designed to handle across the machines not just they just don't worry about one machine they basically understand all of the storage availability in all of the machines in the cluster to you know form a one big hard disk um, so that we can seamlessly upload a file and then we don't need to really worry about where that file is. Uh, just to give an example how that works, let's take um, in a cluster, consider we have three uh, you know, machines. Um, yeah, so same thing, 10 TB, 10 TB, 20 TB, and all of them are kind of like interconnected. And now, let's see, um, let's say that this itself is a distributed uh, file system. Now, if I have a file of about you know, 35 terabyte, how do I store it? So when I you know, copy that file into distributed file system, what happens is distributed file system automatically breaks them into chunks, like about 64 uh, MB blocks, and then it automatically keeps on filling wherever it is possible, uh, wherever there is space available. Even some files were already here. So as I said, I think I said 35 terabyte, right? One file. Think it 35 terabytes of one file. It breaks into small, small chunks, and then it stores wherever it is possible. But when I query for that file, it automatically knows where are those chunks placed in all of this machine and it retrieves and gives me as one file. That's the beauty of distributed file system. And also I can specify the replication factor. That means that provided that there is enough space here, maybe I had one more machine of about 20 TB and one more machine of 10 TB. So now I have so much of storage available in my network. Um, now, if I copy one file of 35 TB and I say, please replicate into um, uh, two copies, maybe to set it to two uh, in a replication factor. That means that there are, there are two copies of the files in these machines. Um, so distributed file system is so clever that it automatically uh, you know, arranges in a, in a way that even if we lose a couple of machines in these clusters, we still get that file, uh, all of the you know pieces of the file, intact so that I can still recover that 35 TB file as a whole. That's the beauty of a you know, distributed file system. And in these days, we really need these distributed file systems because of big data. We have so much of data and we know that we are using commodity hardware. They are not like super computers. They are just a commodity uh, computers which we all have at our home. So they might file, fail at any time. So we are not afford to lose that data. So all that logic is embedded into distributed file system. 
Um, so namely, some of the distributed file systems are, you know, HDFS, um, it, that is Hadoop distributed file system, or I think even cluster file system also works something similar. Uh, I'm going to explain like how basically uh, the distributed file systems um, handles when we write and uh, read, okay? So this is how the distributed file system look. Distributed file system, uh, like basically HDFS, has two main components to it. One is name node and one is data node. Name node, as the name itself indicates, doesn't actually store the data of the actual files which we want to save, but instead it is the one, it acts like a master, basically. It kind of knows the information about where the file is in the data nodes. Basically, it, it is the one who which actually checks the health um, health check of all of the data nodes and it also have the information of what is the size of uh, you know data node and how much it is filled and how much it is uh, empty and all of that and it also uh, takes care when a machine fails and how to move the data in between other servers so that we still have a copies of the files um, uh, according to the replication factor which we have set. And there is one more thing called as you know block size um, which we can configure. So let's say it is configured for 64 MB block. That means that as I mentioned, any file which we try to upload, it will be broken down into 64 MB and then they will be distributed across the different data nodes so that we have the redundant copies properly stored in the available space. Um, so let's see how basically the process of saving the file works. Now I have a client and I have a file which I want to save maybe this has about like a couple of uh, you know gbs um, in size it basically talks to the uh, you know distributed file system first it has to talk to name node um, basically we have a client library which is used to access the data and write and read uh, it talks to name node and say okay i have a file to write uh, it is of the si uh, size about 5 gb and uh, where do i need to write so the name node exactly knows the information of about which node is free uh, and everything so it basically replies back to the client okay please go ahead and write it to data node 1 and tell the data node also to replicate it to data node 3. So that's the information it basically gives it to the client um, and then the client go ahead and write it to data node 1 of all the 5 GB here and then it also tells okay the name node has told please write it to data node 3 and the data node 1 will take that responsibility of replicating all of that information to data node 3 um, automatically uh, there could be some other you know distributed file system where this whole interaction will be taken care of by the node itself but um, this is the this is how uh, the generic uh, data distributed file systems works where the no name node has all of the metadata information of where the file is and also it is going to record that okay this file will be presented in data node 1 and the copy is presented in 3 um, so that's that that name keeping in uh, job will be taken care by name node so now we have the 5 gb say you know file saved in data node 1 and 3 for some reason if this machine goes down then we know that the copy of 5 gb which we just wrote is not available in the system we just have one copy and we're not supposed to just keep one copy because if this machine goes down we don't have the file at all so the name node automatically tells the data node please replicate it to the available data node if the space is available so now the data node will know that okay uh, i need to replicate it to data node 2 so it basically copies all of the 5 gb file uh, here in the data node so we still have two copies in the system no matter what even if one machine goes down we still have that file gb somewhere here but on a worst case if all machines goes down i mean obviously we will not have uh, have the data but most likely um, we won't have that kind of problem because so most likely we'll be having these data nodes in different rack um, and also we'll be having in different data centers itself maybe this itself is in data center one uh, which is in some location this in some other location uh, so this distributed file system also understand the uh, you know data center aware and uh, rack aware so they know that the replication shouldn't happen in the same rack maybe there could be one more node called as data node four 
uh, it it most likely avoids not to replicate here itself because if this uh, say suppose this uh, I, I will write one more file here of 1 GB so if the name node tells you to replicate it to 1 and 4 that's a bad strategy because that 1 GB file is in here and also in here okay now what if this rack which is in data center 1 completely you know broken down or it caught fire that means that both the backup and the actual copy both was destroyed in the same fire incident uh, so it's a bad strategy so the distributed file system also understand that I shouldn't be replicating in the same rack or same data center it always tried to replicate into the cross data center and and then a different rack so that way even if one data center completely you know burned down we still have the copies of the data in different location and different racks uh, so that way the data is still safe um, and for the client it never feels like okay I the data is somewhere somewhere and it's very difficult to access and it is uh, for, for the client libraries it will be so seamlessly accessible just like how we access from a single machine um, I think I have covered all of the major information which you guys need to understand about the data file system. Uh, think it like it is just like any other file system which we use it in our machine. Machine, um, but the data is replicated across you know thousands of machines or if not hundreds of machines. But you, we don't even know how this uh, data is replicated and you know transferred between the data nodes. Um, that's more likely what you need to know about distributed file system and most of the technologies in Hadoop framework does support HDFS uh, to read and write like Spark, um, you know, HBase, all of that uh, technology is basically by default supports reading and writing it to HDFS um, based on some agreed protocols. So that's about the distributed file system. Um, you can actually use the same pattern uh, to design a lot of different um, you know applications maybe wherever you want redundancy wherever you want to keep the copy of data in um, safely you can basically uh, uh, use the same design of you having a name node and having data nodes where it saves the metadata is in one server and actual data is in a couple of servers and name node basically controls all of the actions uh, and it takes care of health and it takes care of replication and all of that and you can you can also think okay this is like a single point of failure um, like okay what if this name node goes down uh, if there's only one server for the name node obviously yes if this goes down no one knows where the files are that's a bad design obviously there will be a backup name node which has a replicated uh, you know metadata information or your designs can be or something like that okay any data node will become a name node um, I'm not sure how HDFS does it I think it's the master uh, master as a one backup I think once the name node goes down it basically the other master will take care of um, you know acting like a name node and always the metadata information will be replicated between two uh, you know two name nodes so that way we still have all the metadata also kind of replicated and safe. I think I have covered most of the you know, uh, basic working of distributed file system and when do you need and how uh, to use it and how the data is um, saved. Um, I think yeah, that's about the distributed file system. Uh, thanks for watching.